Welcome to Easy LM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic energy changes in physical and chemical processes. Our subtopic for today is enthalpy of precipitation. So in the previous lesson we looked at the enthalpy of displacement and we noticed some books usually put enthalpy of displacement and some enthalpy of precipitation sort of together because we form uh, some some deposits are made in both situations but they are two separate reactions so you can go back and check how we calculate the values for enthalpy of displacement in the previous uh, lesson so in this lesson we identify what is enthalpy of precipitation and then we do our questions to in regards to the same so heat of Precipitation or enthalpy of precipitation is a heat change which occurs when one mole of a substance is precipitated from its solution. So, for example, in the experiment to determine the heat change of silver chloride, so we are going to displace silver um, or to do a, dis, uh, a precipitation reaction. It's more or less like a double precipitation reaction between solutions which are going now to precipitate out the silver chloride so when you look at the reaction we we are going to react a uh, silver nitrate uh, basically it's like sodium chloride plus silver nitrate so you're going to use sodium chloride so 50 centimeters cubed of silver nitrate and it's two molar and two molar were left in separate beakers and their constant temperatures noted and recorded. And then the sodium chloride solution is added to the silver nitrate as you can see in this setup. And then the beaker is covered with a cardboard box and shaken gently to allow the mixing of the solution as you can see. And then the highest temperature of the mixture is recorded, is noted and recorded. So I want you to note the volumes we are using. So we have 50 centimeters cubed of the nitrate and 50 centimeters cubed of the chloride. So the total volume is going to be 100. So the temperature change was 14 degrees Celsius. And since it rises, it tells you that this is an exothermic reaction. And then the volume of the solution, we say it is 100. 100 is coming from the 50 centimeters cubed of nitrate and plus 50 centimeters cubed of the chloride. So when we calculate the mass of the solution, we take now the solution. Remember, we have mentioned this before, is mass of solution. The what is in solution state. When it's a solid, we do not count it. So the mass of the solution will be 100 grams because we converted, which is the same as one gram is in one centimeter cubed. What about 100 centimeters cubed, which gives us 100 grams? So from the data you have been given, calculate the heat change if you are given the specific heat capacity as 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, and then the molar heat of precipitation of silver chloride. So we will start with the calculation of heat change. We will do it down here. So the heat change is going to be the specific heat capacity times mass of solution times uh, change in temperature. So you you get the mass of the solution, which is 100 grams, as you have seen from the data. But our specific heat capacity is in kilogram. So we we'll divide this by 1,000 so that we can get 0 0.1 kilogram. So, and then the temperature change is going to be 14, since we were told it rose by 14 degrees Celsius. So and our specific heat capacity is 4.2. Uh, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. So let's do the calculation. So heat change is going to be 4.2 times 0 0.1 times 14, which will give us 5.88. And this case it's in kilojoules. The next question is the molar precipitation of silver chloride. So when we write the equation, it is important for us to get the moles of each solution so that we can get the moles of the the, the precipitation. So it is uh, silver, uh, nitrate, 
plus sodium chloride to form silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. The good thing with this equation is that the mole ratio is going to be 1 is to 1. So the mole ratio is 1 is to 1. Unlike if it was another equation where you have to do some bit of calculation. So you get the moles of the nitrate and the moles of the chloride so that you can get the moles of the silver chloride. So the moles of the nitrate, remember we were given from the previous experiment as 2 molar. Both of them are 2 molar. So we use that information. So 2m means it's 2 moles. In a thousand centimeters cubed, what about in 50 centimeters cubed? So this gives you 2 times 50 divided by a thousand, which is the same as 100 divided by a thousand, which is the same as 0 0.1. So you get 0 0.1 moles. So if you use the mole ratio, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, so this is 0 0.1. So if you say 0 0.1 moles uh, released uh, 5.88 kilojoules of heat, what about 1 mole? So that is going to be 5.88 kilojoules divided by 0 0.1 mole, which is going to give us 58. 0.8. This is now kilojoules per mole. And remember, since our reaction was exothermic, we put the minus. So that's how you calculate the enthalpy change for precipitation. So let's do one more question. So copper sulfate reacts with barium chloride according to the equation shown below. So we have copper sulfate, barium chloride, copper to form copper chloride in barium sulfate solid. So you have already been given the heat change. You can see it's an exothermic reaction. So you note the heat change is negative 17.7 and it is kilojoules per mole. Calculate the temperature change. So we are looking for temperature change. So when 900 centimeters cubed of copper sulfate was added to 600, centimeters cubed of one mole barium chloride. So when you look at the equation, let's see the mole ratio. If you balance this equation, it's balanced. So the mole ratio of copper sulfate to barium chloride to copper chloride to barium sulfate is going to be 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. We have been told that 900 of copper sulfate centimeters cubed, that means 1 mole from the information is in 1,000 centimeters cubed. What about 900? So it is 900. We want to get the number of moles divided by 1,000, which gives us 0 0.9 moles. And this is for the copper sulfate that was used. And then for the barium chloride, it's uh, one mole in 1,000 centimeters cubed. Uh, what about 600 centimeters cubed? This is the same as 600 divided by 1,000, which gives us 0 0.6 moles. So if you look at the mole ratio, 0.9, and this is 0 0.6, it tells you that the copper sulfate and the barium chloride were not in equal moles. So remember that the barium chloride is the one that is going to be precipitated to form barium sulfate. So this is what is important for us. So this tells us that the copper sulfate is excess. So we are going to use the mole ratio of 0 0.6 instead of the mole ratio of 0 0.9. So we are going to use 0 0.6. So this heat change per mole, in molar heat change, it means that uh, if one mole of 
the solution gives off 17.7 kilojoules of heat so what about 0 0.6 basically we are going back like where we started from so from this reaction we, pro we have 0 0.6 moles that took part in the reaction so it's going to be 0 0.6 times 17.7 Initially, we used to ask ourselves, what about one mole? So we are going back. So this gives us N.62, and this is now going to be kilojoules, not per mole, just kilojoules. So this is what we are working with. So when you go back to the formula of each change, it's usually specific heat capacity times change in temperature times the mass of the solution. So heat change now we have which is 10.62 kilojoules is equals to joules remember this is in kilojoules but our specific heat capacity is in joules so we can do the conversion before we put it in our formula so it's going to be 1000 joules is equals to one kilojoule what about 10.62 which will give us uh this value 10,620 joules which is equal to specific heat capacity 4.2 and then times change in temperature which you don't know times the mass of the solution so the mass of the solution basically is the total solution which is going to be 900 plus 600 which will give us uh, 1500 which is the same as 15 100 divided by 1500 uh, grams so we are going to still use grams you won't use kilograms because our specific heat capacity is in grams so this is going to be 1500 grams so that means it's 10,620 is equals to when you multiply 4.2 times 1500 you get 6,300 and the change in temperature so 6300 divided by 6300 which will give us that the change in temperature is going to be 1.7 degrees celsius so you are just being asked to calculate the change of temperature so you notice in this calculation we're just going back so you can take your time and go through the calculation again step by step but that's how the calculation is done so that's it on heat of precipitation. See you in the next uh, session.